One September day, the perfect blue sky exploded. Dust billowed, buildings crumbled, and underneath it all, a tree sprouted green leaves in its distress. Pulled from the wreckage, the tree saw many seasons pass as it slowly recovered far away from home. Until one day, forever scarred and forever stronger, it was replanted at the 9-11 memorial. This story of the real survivor tree uses nature's cycle of colors to reflect on the hope and healing that come after a tragedy and assures readers of their own remarkable resilience. Hey reading friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Maggie, and this is Maggie Reads. I'm in my mini note, reading nook, and Big Joe beanbag, and today's book is Survivor Tree, written by Marcy Colleen, illustrated by Aaron Becker. A tree stood steel straight and proud at the foot of the towers that filled its sky. It grew, mostly unnoticed, s silently marking the seasons. In winter time, the tree's bare bones stretched tall, reaching for the freezing bright blue above. Come spring, white flowers blossomed, piles of petals scattered as people rushed by. Glossy green leaves announced the arrival of summer, casting polka-dotted shade on the sidewalk. In fall, the tree blazed red with a million hearts before each took off in an elegant dance. So it went on for almost 30 years. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Bare, white, green, red. Winter, spring, summer, fall. One September day, the perfect blue sky exploded. Under the blackened remains, the tree lay crushed and burned. Workers dug through the wreckage and discovered unexpected green. The tree was taken far from the smoldering landscape to fresh soil, where its scattered stump encountered a different sky. Two stone blocks were placed in its stunned shadow, a memorial of makeshift towers in a makeshift home. No longer stretching tall, the tree reached deep in the warm earth, and all was quiet. Winter passed, the tree was bare. Spring arrived without flowers, but a flutter of speckled wings. Then one day, buds to blossoms, blossoms to leaves, through charred and gnarled, the tree began to grow. And so it went for almost 10 years, white, green, red, bare, spring, summer, fall, winter. It was time to go home. The tree hesitated to fill the empty sky People no longer rushed by. Instead, they stopped and wept beside two forever filling pools. pools. And they noticed the tree. Fingers traced the timeline. Warm palms pressed the old wound, the, bar join it, the bark joining the past to the present. Today, the tree rises steel straight and proud beside the footprints of the towers that once filled its sky, silently marking the seasons, blazing with a million red hearts in the fall. Our survivor tree. In October 2001, recovery workers discovered the remains of a calorie pear tree 
buried deep in the rubble of the World Trade Center. Its roots were severed, its crown was gone, its branches were burnt. Nonetheless, a bit of unseasonable green growth signaled that the tree was alive. But in distress, it was soon became known as the last living thing pulled from the rubble. The tree was placed in the care of the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation and replanted in the Arthur Ross Nursery in the Bronx on November 11, 2001. Its chances of survival were slim. The team at the nursery built a memorial around the tree, including two stone blocks to represent the fallen towers. Even with specialist care, the tree did not blossom, as hoped, in the spring. However, the story goes that soon after a dove nested, nested in the tree's barren branches, buds began to appear. For several years, the tree underwent a process of healing and rehabilitation in December 2010. It was replanted as part of the 9-11 memorial, where it provides a, long, a living timeline of the events that tragic day. The rough bark of its tree and lower branches symbolizes life before, a visible line of demarca uh, dramatic de <laughs> sorry I got lost. <laughs> a visible line of the I don't know say that word in indicates the day the towers came down, and smooth new branches signify life after. Since its return, the tree has flourished and it's often the first bloom in the Mortal Plaza each spring. The Survivor Tree Seeding Program started on September 11, 2013, in partnership with the Bartlett Tree Experts of Stamford, Connecticut, and John Bowne High School in the Flushing neighborhood of Queens. Each year, seedling, seedlings from the Survivor Tree are given to three communities that have endured tragedy in recent years so that they might plant their own symbol of a hopeful future. I hope you enjoyed me reading Survivor Tree. If you did, a link to the book is in the description below. Also, click that like button. It helps me to know books you've enjoyed since YouTube channels like mine, whose content is made for kids, can't receive comments anymore. If you're a subscriber, thank you. And if you're a new viewer, please consider clicking subscribe or ask your parents to on their account. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TV and my website at MagGreets.com. Chase rainbows, choose kindness, see you next time.